Okay, let us make a start now. So the plan for today is I will introduce few concepts on idealization and then we will look at few examples from tutorial uh, examples that is in, in Blackboard. And I will also go through uh, the lecture notes, how to go through those basically for on your behalf. So, what is idealization? So, idealization is to take a, from a real structure to make it as a solvable problem. So, so any real structure, you have to make lot of assumptions to analyze it so that it, it is in a mathematical, it can, it, is subject, it can be subjected to mathematical treatment. For example, any, any object in this room, say be that the desk or a beam, it is not perfectly the way we assume or we analyze it to them to be, for example. So, there are lots of different assumptions we have to make. We have to make assumptions about the material being homogeneous, something called isotropic, that means properties do not vary in different directions differently. We have to also assume sometimes that the cross sections do not change along the length. So, all these assumptions are necessary to solve a problem and these forms are part of what is called idealization and then only you can solve a problem. So, I will spend few points here, a uh, few moments here to deal with that idealization. So, I will start with this sort of a bridge. So, it is, it is nothing but few stone slabs resting on stones looking at uh, over here across this string. Now, those of you who are civil engineer, you probably find this little thingy in, in Patterdale when you go for surveying exercises in your second year. So, this, this is from there in a way. But if we want to analyze this little stone bridge, I am calling it a bridge now. So, already, uh, already I am starting to put some of my assumptions there and those stone on the, on the, in the stream you could think they are supports or columns, for example. Now, if you want to analyze these slabs or the bridge, we could make assumptions like this is a bridge for, a, uh, this is a beam for example. Now, of course, this beam idealization means that this is a support there and there is another support there and of course it is this slab is represented by this line. Now of course as you can appreciate this is nothing but a line, this is an actual slab and its width and the depth and possibly the properties as well vary even within that meter or so length. So we do not consider that while analyzing it strictly speaking if it is not required explicitly, if it does then the problem becomes complicated and it goes beyond your hand calculation. You have to adopt different methods. So, for your purpose in year one, we will take lot of assumptions like this. We will assume that this stone slab, I will represent it as a, as a beam and its cross section will not change along the length, its width will not change along the length and this support which are the stone pillars, I will assume that okay, it is supported in the middle of these stone pillars. So, the span of, 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 this, uh, of this slab is from the middle of the, between the middle of these two pillars. So, this is one way to as, uh, introduce several assumptions and the weight of that slab itself, I will consider as something called uniformly distributed load or UDL for short. They are shown by these wiggly, wormy type of lines. Now, this is a very historical way of representing 
uniformly distributed load because in the olden days to test the structure the, the weight that you put on the structure in the lab used to be in this form in, in this form of a semi se hemisphere so you put those in, in, in on the on your structures and it used to be made up of lead for example so those lead load so that that sort of a formation it has started it, it stayed in that way so if this semicircle means this is uniformly distributed load now of course the load is also not uniform in this in this simple slab because it will depend on its weight self weight and if the cross section varies self weight will also vary but we'll assume here they are uniform so that will give us give us uh, give us some idea about the load carrying capacity of this slab now if you do need more sophisticated analysis incorporating all these differences you can do that but possibly not by the hand calculations that you are going to learn in this uh, in this year now on top of it if you are crossing or or doing a sword fight for example very much like uh, robin hood style so uh, we need to consider that as a load now again we'll assume the load is acting this person's load is acting at a point and it will be shown by an arrow in this form so so all the load like those like a like a person's load or any other load can be represented by a pointed arrow okay and the support you can do by two reactions like those and if you can if you look closely support should be represented by triangle and there is a little bit of differences between the left and right triangle left triangle there are three circles underneath it those are something called roller bearing so that means at this end the support can move left to right in horizontal direction whereas the right support does not move either vertically or horizontally the left support can move horizontal directions now we do introduce these two different support to accommodate to ignore any stresses that can generate from thermal expansion or contraction because if two ends cannot move horizontally and if temperature falls in the leg district night at say minus 5 then the breeze would contract any material would contract and that will create stress in them so we are saying okay we are not interested in this thermal stresses so these if if there is temperature drop in the night then the the slab would contract and this support would move horizontally to get rid of that stress now if you look carefully this hardly this is going to have this uh, this pill a stone pillar is going to move so possibly there is a gap in there for example so there is a gap between two slabs so that would accommodate any contraction or expansion now of course in realistically that will involve huge amount of friction for example but we are ignoring that in here so lot of assumptions we take from a real structure to the structure we solve so we you will see lot of problems that you will be given a problem like this but a relation to the link to the reality is very different so always bear that in mind that what you are solving is just an idealized assumed safe size load etc okay so if i go to a much more robust bridge for example here of 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 a, of a road bridge over an embankment then again you can assume this bridge as as a beam uh, this particular one you can see its its cross section vary depth varies for example there are stiffeners from type uh, from at several at at interval of say meter or so but we ignore all of these and then we put some loading onto this as uniformly distributed load plus to point load possibly from uh, two vehicles possibly standing over there again some other continuous span bridge 
you could think about this is uh, represented by this three span beam with UDL and then on top of it these are the supports that is given. And the reaction force again as I said this uh, triangle means it will restrict both horizontal and vertical movement and here only vertical movement in this case. Now how does those bearings look like for example here. Now a close up view could be seen from here as you could see this is the support of this particular bridge and then you could see there is a pin there. So the bridge top which is called superstructure in this case can notionally rotate about this point. So these are sort of hinge that we call hinge or pin but it cannot move vertically up or down and neither it can move horizontally in this direction. So this is really a pin type of support which is this type of support. It will, it will resist both horizontal and vertical movement. So it cannot go horizontally, cannot go vertically. But there are so another example is if you go to a supermarket or somewhere some of these type of structures you could see again that is a pin that doesn't let it to move horizontally or vertically. But under some bridges you could have that sort of a roller joint and they would move horizontally but they will restrict any vertical movement in this case. This one is slightly different. You have got, this is bridge during construction. You have got a, a, a column or pylon in, in the middle and this is something called balanced cantilever constructions. So you could assume the load due to this is here. Of course you can take into account the uniformly distributed load due to self weight. But the support here is not only restricts vertical and horizontal movement but due to the way it is built, it's not a pin there, so it will restrict any rotation as well. So this is called a fixed support or encrusted support. So fixed to the other side. So that means this beam is not free to rotate at about this support. Using that same structure, same approach, you can analyze, uh, for example, an aircraft uh, to start with to uh, do the sizing, initial sizing. So you could think about this is the weight of the fuselage and the wing due to the air pressure acting upward and then of course the support would be here is very much like this bridge, uh, balanced cantilever bridge. So in between you have got fixed support so you can assume the same thing over here so the wing could be fixed to the fuselage and then the weight you can put it for the initial sizing. Now of course when you are doing five, say Airbus or Boeing designing an aircraft would not do that at, with all those assumptions. They will employ other techniques called finite element to look into every detail of the material properties as well as the shape, changes in shape and sizes and the cross sections. Now to get the initial sizing in your in your first year, few years of course and for even for Boeing and Airbus people as well to get what are the lifts for certain engine thrust you need to come up with the idea of the, or whether this wingspan is sufficient or not or what are the loads that is coming onto it you need to do some quick calculations in this form to start with. Okay? Big structures like Burj Khalifa for example due to wind pressure you could approximate that as a uh, that as a structures like this which is fixed to the ground and you have got the dead weight weight of this building acting in this direction and the wind pressure acting laterally onto the structure and, and wind pressure increases from the from the base to the top it does not increase actually uh, linearly in that way it's very much like a parabolic but for approximation as a first one you could take consider that or up to that height. So these are the wind pressure for example in this case of Burj Khalifa it, it acts as a triangular load and this is how we represent that. So it is a beam 
represented by a triangular load in there. So similarly, the triangular load you can, one can experience on a dam, for example. So if you go down in, along the depth in the water, the water pressure will increase. And water pressure will increase exactly in this, so at the top of the su water surface, water pressure is zero. And then as you go down deeper and deeper, water pressure would start to increase. So on the dam surface then, the sideways pressure from water will start to increase linearly as you go down. So different types of load, how do we represent that? So of course the beam we represent by a single line and we assume that takes into account the width and all everything. It does not change use the cross-section shape. So this is called something called a prismatic cross-section. So it's like a prism. And the point load is shown by an arrow. Uniformly distributed load either by the semicircle or lots of small arrows as well. And triangular load in, in that format and the displacement and the other thing are given. Other type as well, so something called internal hinge could be another point. So you have got the support to the ground, but also two parts of this arch may be connected by a pin in the middle. So this is called internal hinge. So they are shown by a solid circle and then the load on that would be uniformly distributed load from this footbridge and then those loads are carried on to the arch through these tie members. Okay, so this is in the form of how do we analyze it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you some problems uh, in that way. So before I go into problem, I'm going to show you the lecture notes and how you, you are going to look at that. So the lecture notes is available if you go to the website uh, uh, to Blackboard. Let's go into your view. So this is what you will see. So if you go to the revision, then you will see the lecture notes is in there. So for part one. Okay. So this is the lecture notes uh, that you will be looking at in here. So we talk about few things, about uh, reaction forces, resolution of the forces, what is a moment, now moment, one thing is uh, for you to consider always, the moment of a force is the force multiplied by the distance of the line of action of the force from the point. So if you imagine you are, you are using a range to put a force on a knot here, and you are applying a force of 100 Newton along these directions, for example. You want to calculate what is the moment that 100 Newton force is applied, being applied onto this knot. So what you need to do is, to calculate the moment, you need to draw a line perpendicular to the line of action of the force from the point you are collecting the moment, calculating the moment. So if you are calculating moment on the knot, you drop a perpendicular to the line of action of the force. That is always, always the case. So not this distance. So not the 100 Newton times 0.3 meter. Because this line is not perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So it's the force times the perpendicular distance to the, from the point you are calculating the moment to the line of action for the force. So in this case, force is applied at that point so we extended the line of actions of the force. So this would be the moment lever arm, which is if this is 0.3 meter and if this angle is 30 degree, this would be 0.3 cosine 30. So do remember that and then this is another, uh, there is also another way you could resolve this force into two perpendicular, two uh, uh, perpendicular direction. One is perpendicular to this line and one is going along that line of the range, which is the problem of this person putting an elastic band and, and stretching it, one of the example problem. So there is a video solution for that, you could have a look at that. So to summarize, moment is force times the perpendicular distance. 
and broadly speaking, you'll be using these three equilibrium equations. Summation of force in the one horizontal direction is zero, summation of forces in vertical direction is zero, moment about a point is zero. So that means there is no net movement in two translation into two perpendicular direction and there is no moment about a point. Now, this is, there is a variation of this. You can even, you can even do uh, three moment equations to, to uh, uh, ensure equilibrium. So let me just give you a demonstration of that. So, so say if you have got an object here, say if you have got an object there, and you say, okay, this object is static and stable. So what do you want to ensure? You want to ensure, first of all, there is no net force in the horizontal direction. So in the horizontal direction. So, so that, is, that is the first one. So that will give you summation of force in the horizontal direction is zero. You can also say, okay, this does not move in the vertical direction. So that means there is also no net force in the vertical direction. So that will give you summation of all the forces in the vertical direction as zero. Now, this could be in any two directions. So we do perpendicular, horizontal and vertical just to uh, get the problem of in terms of calculation easier. And third thing you say, okay, there is no net rotation. So third is, there is no net rotation. So it does not rotate. So that means summation of moment about this point is zero. So these three equations ensures that it does not move in the plane, horizontal or vertical direction by these two. So that means there is no net force because if it will move only if there is a net force in those two directions. And third thing is it does not rotate at this point. So that gives you the moment equilibrium as well. So these three equations would be sufficient to check your stability. Now this of course doesn't take into account if a body moves with a constant velocity. So that is, that is, uh, then, then of course these two conditions needs to be rethought about. So something, so as long as there is no acceleration in, in the horizontal and vertical direction. Now, same thing, you can show it by other directions. So I'll take one equation at a time. So if I say summation of horizontal forces zero, what does it mean? That means there is no net forces in the horizontal direction, right? So, so, so that means the net force could still be in the vertical direction. But the second condition rules out that there is no net forces in the vertical direction. But what about if I have a force system which is something like something like this. So there is no net force, both are equal, F and F. So no net force in the horizontal directions, that's valid. No net force in the vertical direction because this is balanced by that force, so that is also valid. But the moment equilibrium is not there. So the moment is zero is not valid. So this is this will try to rotate in this direction. Okay. <coughs> Taking it a little bit further, I'll this time start with with the moment equation, the third equation first. So if I say moment about a point, let's say A, is zero. So moment about point A equal to zero. So that means what? That means if there is any net force acting onto this structure, if there is at all any net force, that force must go through point 
A. So it could be these directions, it could be another directions for example. Now this is still valid. So this, this red load is still being moment about A equal to zero. So that would still be valid. Now you could say okay, I could do with another point that moment about point B is also zero. But still, if this force go through point B, for example, then this is still valid. This is go going along these two points, so this is still valid. But if you now say, I'll take another point which is C, and make your point moment about C equal to zero, then this red load will have definitely a moment about point C. So this is not valid. So these three equation is we can also be equilibrium equation, equilibrium equations instead of this set, standard set. This could also satisfy equilibrium only one condition, A, B and C are not on the same line. So this is only valid if A, B, C are not on a single line. Or, or what is called collinear. So equilibrium equation, as I said, comes in different varieties and forms. So you could have the standard one, summation of horizontal forces zero, vertical forces zero, moment equal to zero. But three moment equations can also serve you the equilibrium equation. And you will see later on, we'll use different of these combinations. We can sometimes do moment about A equal to zero, moment about B equal to zero, and summation of vertical forces zero. That can also sometimes gives you, give you, uh, or summation of either horizontal force or vertical forces zero could give you also the set of, set of uh, equilibrium equation. It all depends on the problem, and we'll use that. So don't think these are the only three equilibrium equations that you can use. You can use different combinations of those. So three moment equations could also satisfy equilibrium as long as they are not along a single line. Okay, so we will we'll, we'll do that again. Now there are some, in the notes, there are some uh, talk about what do you talk about when you talk about a beam, what does the beam do? beam carries load in bending, for example. What does arch do? Arch carries the load into compressions, for example. Slabs, shell, etc. And they, here I talk about the idealizations a little bit. And then the load, so this is a point load, that's how we represent by a single arrow. Moment by, it's not very circular, but it's a sort of a, an arc, we represent moment and the common units for load are newton, kilonewton or meganewton. Similarly, moment is two unit force and, and the length, so either newton meter, kilonewton meter, etc. Uniformly distributed load, we can show it by either these semicircles or by rows of arrows of the same height. So that would be, unit would be so many newton per meter or so many kilonewton per meter. And triangular load is, is in this form. So what happens with a uh, UDL or uniformly distributed load is how do you treat that? You don't treat each of these arrows or each of these semicircles separately. What you can do is you can find out what is the total load. So the total load you can multiply the load intensity so multiply each of these load times the load uh, times the length, for example. So the amount of load per unit length, per meter or per millimeter, you multiply how many millimeter or how many meter is there. So you calculate the total load and put it through its centroid. So if it is uniformly distributed, it would be in the middle of that load trend. Similarly, if it is a triangularly distributed, like the wind pressure or the water pressure, 
you find the what is the total area of this load and put it through its centroid. Now you may remember the centroid of a triangle is one third from the side. So it would be one third from the right hand side and two third from this side. <laughs> if it is any other general type of load, you need to do the integrations to find the total load and then you need to what is called a centroid by calculating is the first moment and then divide by total load. So we'll come to that final point later on with a bit of a complicated problem. In terms of the supports, so as I said, the first one is what you call a roller or a pin support which lets the structures move horizontally. So that could be represented by this roller bearing under a bridge. Now one thing to note that the way we draw this, you may think that, well, it cannot go down vertically, but it can probably lift up because this is just resting, these wheels are resting on the ground, so it can come off, for example. But in, that is ideal, idealized drawing. So what you can see in a construction is that it is hard, it cannot move vertically upward as well because there is some normally a tie bar which, it, which attaches the roller to the ground. So it can neither can move up nor can down. So vertical movement is restricted. But horizontal movement is there, the roller can move in the horizontal plane. So in terms of the reaction force, always remember any movement, if it is restricted, it will give rise a possible reaction force. So horizontally there is no restriction, so no reaction force, it can slide. Whereas this type of bearing resists vertical movement, so there is a possibility of a vertical reaction. Why I am saying possibility? Because that is only if you have got load vertically onto the structure. If there is no vertical load, there is no vertical reaction. Or if there is a load vertical some way that the other supports are taking all the vertical load, then maybe this support doesn't take any reaction. So that is possible. So there is a but point is there is a possibility of a reaction. Now if you come to a pin like this, this restricts movement in the both horizontal and vertical directions. So you can expect a possible reaction force in the vertical and horizontal direction. Now you could see the beam also I am shown, so this is the original point and then it can move horizontally but I am also showing that it is, the beam rotates. So these pins means that each of these member can freely rotate relative to each other without incurring any resistance. So that is again a pure assumption because you could assume that these pins are anything but friction free. So there would be a huge amount of friction is involved, so they are not really free to rotate, but we'll assume that there is free rotation. Always this allows free rotation. That means there is no resistance f against rotations between these, uh, these, uh, these frames in here. So this component and this component can freely rotate respective to each other. So as if they are connected by a frictionless bearing for example. So that is both these cases they are meant, but in reality they are not. So of course these are idealization and assumptions that I am talking about. Aircraft wing, again you could talk about the wing is, is attached to the fuselage by a simply support, uh, by a fixed support. Now of course here the movement, the fuselage is, the fuselage is restricting vertical movement of the wing, so a vertical reaction force you'd expect at the joint, a horizontal movement so the, so, the, so the wing doesn't fly off horizontally for example, so fuselage would restrict that, so a, a horizontal reaction force, plus it will not let it freely rotate about the fuselage, unlike in this case which has got a pin, so it will restrict any rotation as well, so that's why a fixed moment is also, a reaction moment is also applied. So in this case, we have got a two reaction force and one reaction moment. And this is the diagram that we normally use when you are representing as a beam. 
So roller support is like that, pin support, which is both horizontal and vertical without any roller at the bottom, and this is a fixed one. Difference is roller have got only one reaction force, vertical in this case, pin has got two reaction force, vertical and horizontal, and a fixed support or built-in support has got three reaction force, two uh, reaction forces and a reaction moment. So these are the three one. So then there is some problem shown with a lamp post under a, uni under a load from there. Say if you think about the wind loading, you could idealize it as a total load you can calculate and you say it is a point load acting at a one third distance from the top. And then this is a fixed support, so it has got a vertical reaction as well as there should be a horizontal reaction as well because there is a horizontal load and a moment. So the horizontal reaction is not shown, that should be there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll change that to put the horizontal reactions. Okay, and then when we do that, then we'll come up with uh, this type of problems which are explained in detail. So read through that and then if there is any problem, we'll discuss in here. But here today, what I'm going to do is this tutorial problem. Tutorial problem is given in your, so if you go to this week, uh, this week you'll find tutorial series one and that's the problems are given in here. Now later on, once you have done it, then I will put those tutorial problems in the revision section over here. In fact, they are already there. So I'll, I'll uh, with the solutions. So I, I'll, I'll uh, un, un, un make it available later on, on that one. So let's look at couple of problems, how we can solve those problems here. So the first problem is for each of these problems, you need to find out what are the support reactions. So this is the problem. You need to find out what are the support reactions in this case. Okay. So, so let's look at the first problem over here. Now, so let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So this is the problem that is given. So. So a beam, again, you can uh, imagine that's the bridge beam over there, over that stream, and you have got two meter and five meter. So let's say this is the distance. And you have got a pin support. Pin support means there is no, this is free to rotate at this end. So this is a pin support. So pin support, what is the characteristics? That it restricts horizontal movement, restricts vertical movement, but free to rotate, free to rotate. So this is the characteristics of this pin support. This side is shown with a roller support. So the roller support is like this triangle and this point pin means this is free to rotate and this has got few wheels at the bottom and then this is the ground. So this is, this is what is ground here. So this is what is ground there. So this is what is called a roller support. So roller support here restricts restricts vertical movement but free horizontally and free to rotate. So these two are free. Now of course there is a load acting on to this at this point. So the first thing you draw is a free body diagram. So free body diagram of this beam would be, first of all, you draw the beam, you draw the beam, 
and you strip each of the support and each of the support when you strip you put it appropriate reaction forces even if they are not there so this is a pin and it restricts horizontal movement so there is a possibility of a horizontal reaction force it restricts vertical movement so there is a possibility of a vertical reaction force there is nothing else free to rotate so that means there is no moment that would be required go to the right hand support a roller it restricts only vertical movement so there is a possibility of a vertical force vertical reaction force and then you apply the load onto these points okay and this load is given as value is given as 5 kN so this is your free body diagram and the distances are given so this is 2 meter and this is 5 meter these values are given now let's say uh, give some uh, name to these points let's say this is point a and this is point b for example now if we have to calculate these reaction forces let's say we call this as reaction force at a but in horizontal direction and this is reaction force at a in the vertical direction and this is reaction force at b in the vertical direction let's say these are the three nomenclature that we use how do we find out so this was the first step draw a free body diagram so first of all you need to look at the supports and then you draw the free body diagram second thing so i need to know what are these forces so the question is what is r a h r a v and r b v so what are these three values this is my question this is what it is asking so to do that we will go to our second step which is the equilibrium equation so the equilibrium equations would give me these three forces reaction forces now there are three equilibrium equations we know there are three unknown so we can solve it uniquely if this number of reaction force was more than 3 so instead of this is being roller this was a pin so that means you will have another r b h then four reaction force you cannot solve that by using simple equilibrium equation we have to deal with something different one of the examples last week i have done with the three bars Would 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 uh, do that. So look at the solutions for that bar, and you'll see whether wh why you cannot solve that problem. So equilibrium you can have in any varieties you want. So we'll go to the simple one first. So summation of horizontal force zero. So this is our first equilibrium equation. So what are those we have got? So this will imply. So you could take a take a sign convention. let's say you take force going from left to right as positive so this is your 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 horizontal force convention so that means r a h is going to left to right and there are four forces three reaction plus one force there is no other force going into horizontal direction so this should be equal to zero so that is my first one is solved r a h is equal to 0 so that first one is solved second one could be i can do in two ways i can start directly go to moment or i can do summation of vertical forces zero so either of these two is possible now let's stay with what you already know possibly so summation of vertical forces zero and i will take in this case upward force as positive so let's say upward force as positive so what does that will imply so i have got here r a v is going up 
5 kilo newton is going down so that is with a minus sign and rvv is going up this equal to 0 there are no other one so this is nothing but is giving me an information that those two vertical reaction must be equal to 5 kilonewton which makes sense because those are the only two are available there but it doesn't give us exactly how much each of these they gives me this relationship that summation of these two must balance 5 kilonewton okay so we cannot solve it yet uniquely so for that i have to go we have to go to the third equation so what is the third equation so third equation is possibly i'll take a moment now i can take moment about any points on this along this line either point of the load either point in here either point in there or any other point even not on the beam itself so the moment equation moment about any point on the plane it could be about this point as well it could be about that point now when taking moments be judicious judicious in a way so that you can eliminate some unknown forces from your calculation i could see i have got managed to get raas that's done i still don't know what is rav and rbv now if i take moment about either point a or point b that will make it my calculations a little bit easier because i could quickly get what is the other force in terms of the known force 5 kilonewton so taking moment here about the point any point is is possible but you take uh, if you want to make the calculation easier take about a point where an unknown reaction force or as many unknown reaction force you can get rid of so the good choice is point a so if i take moment about point a equal to 0 all forces going through point a to 0 then that will get rid of ra h and ra v in this case it doesn't matter because we know already ra is 0 but this will make moment of ra v also 0 and let's take clockwise moment as positive so so if i take moment about this point so what is the moment due to 5 kilonewton force now this is if you imagine this is the beam 5 kilonewton force will try to rotate the beam in this direction which is the directions a clock moves so so that is definitely a positive moment and the moment would be 5 kilonewton times the distance perpendicular from the point that you are doing so this is 2 meter so 5 times 2 so that's the moment due to the 5 kilonewton force about point a what about the moment due to rbv now again this is the moment point i'm taking the moment so hold your point uh, like a hinge and put the directions of the force so it is moving in this direction which is in the opposite direction of a clock moving so that is a minus sign and the value of that moment would be rbv times rbv times the distance which is 7 meter so that is the two other force that would be equal to 0 so rbv if you calculate that would be 10 over 7 kilonewton once you know that then you can go back to previous equation so rav would be 5 minus rbv so that would be 5 times 7 which is 35 so that would be 25 over 7 kilonewton. So you can now know all three forces in this way. So try to solve as many problems as you can. And then again, next problem here, multiply the load with the distance. So the total load hits is here 20 kilonewton. And it will be acting at the middle of this line. So that will be acting two and a half meter from the right hand side. That will be acting, the load will be acting. 
Okay, so we'll do some more of this uh, on Thursday, plus there is a tutorial on Friday. Okay? Thank you. is the, uh, the force times the distance between them. Because you can take moment about one force, yeah. then that is the force times the distance. So we don't, we don't add both, we just do one force times the distance. Okay, thank you. Because uh, yeah. that, that's the couple. Yeah. Where do we take the moment to the force time? I mean, I took it here, is, it, is that okay? Because any point is fine. But I as I said, if you, if you take it any other point, then that will make your calculation difficult. So maybe you can take about this. But part. then, like the only one, uh, so here the forces will be because they are going to sort of yeah one. So there will be moment due to that force. Yeah. Moment due to that force is zero, zero. and there is a reaction moment at that point. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to ask you this. Um, what's the name of this like column? This is a uh, column. Yeah. Like I H. Oh, this is uh, difficult to uh, say because H means much more uh, size and very square. So this yeah. would be probably I. I, okay. Yeah. And sorry, this one, what is it called? This is called uh, mm -hmm. not, um, uh, yeah, uh, hunch. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank hunch. you. Hunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I have a few things to ask. Yep. What, I'm not... Do I also have to do questions G and H at the bottom because we haven't taken trusses and I don't know if assuming if assuming the flat B would work for a three point. Uh, uh, you mean the, uh, the arch? The, whatever we have done, you can you can use it for to solve all the problems. Ah, so, but I'm talking. But we haven't addressed trusses yet. Doesn't matter. It's still equilibrium. Oh. Wait. So I can, wait. So I can still assume. So I can still just take each each B. Oh wait, this is this the lecture recording, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, it is recorded. Fantastic. You can you can use it um, use this um, to uh, any problem in in so, sir, uh, so tutorial six one. So in the beam, in the second to last, in the bridge, one of the truss braces. Yeah. All I just have to do is assume that the that the bottom of the bridge is the bridge itself, and assume that its trusses are no more than mere forces. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Do we have to do that shoot for next lecture? Yeah, try to do as many as you can. Yeah. Next lecture. And I'll go through some of these problems. Also, Nova, Nova, Squiggly Line. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. 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 For like the reaction. Force. Yeah. Would it just be down? Yeah, it's like down. Yeah. Uh, the load would be, you can represent it that by a single load. Yeah, and is that load like at the end of a line? No, in the middle. In the, in the, middle in the center. Center okay. of it. So if this is the load, then you put the centroid of that load. Thank you. How's it going, you right? <laughs> Not bad. There is an example in the in the note. You can you can go through that. Yeah, okay. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, getting back into it slowly. Is, is, is team, really team back now? Team's back, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. But I mean, there's not, not, not fully handled. Not, not a huge amount of people around still, right? Uh, I don't know about Paris, but George Bank is still quite quiet. 